What are we doing? What are we up to? Well, we did. Well, we did the cracking out portion of it, right? And we did the uh, Grail. Yes. Now we got to move on to. Mm. Do we have comments today, or we're going to just jump to CBCS for CGC on what we're going to submit? Oh, you know what? I think we should talk about what we're going to submit. All right. So, for me, there's a handful of reasons why I go one way or another. So these are examples. Okay, we're going to get into specifics in a bit. Okay, we'll get into pricing and all that in a second. So. The first thing is my stack of CGC books. And I'm going to talk about the books that I have here. The first is a Stray Dogs 1 in 10 variant. We have the Crow Homage. It's kind of in theme today, but this book is high grade. This book is a optioned independent title that was so damn successful. Such a gorgeous, flawlessly done cover by Tony Fleece, Trish Farsner that I felt has a lot of time to take off. It's going to be a minute so we see any type of like option news take place because the option news came out prior to the release. So it's going to happen a little bit sooner than I think people suspect. However, looking at wait times, which wait times is a big part of this conversation here, I'm okay to wait. This book isn't going to take off, in my opinion, in the next three, four months. So if I have to wait a little bit, of a lengthy time, I'm going to send it to CGC for this particular book because if it has that 9-8 potential, there's a lot of these made and it could be a wanted book. So I don't want to have to go in competition with others that have graded through CGC. If I go through CBCS instead, I'd rather have one of the CGC comics in the marketplace for this particular book because it's option and has potential long-term. What about you? Give me one of them. So ones that we're going to do for CBCS or CGC. This was a CGC. I'm starting with CGC. You tell me. You can pick whatever you want to talk about. Okay. So before we get too far. Just are we... be specific about which grading company. Okay. So um, I would do CGC on this book, which is Tomb of Dracula 1, because for me it's cut and dry that it's a certain tier on value and for books that I it just makes more sense because it's going to be potentially a 9A copy. It is a gorgeous book. 9-6 would be the absolute lowest, but this is probably a 9.8 copy. All right, so I have to ask you, Jeff, did you see the recent sale for a 9.8 of Tomb of Dracula 1? I'm really hoping you haven't heard it. I mean, the last one I heard was like 7K not too long ago, right? <laughs> Comic fam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show Jeff GPA right here, right now. I'm hoping it's uploaded. Um, it's, you're going to lose your mind here. I can't see. Okay, that. so this sale right here happened. The last sale was... Say it, Jeff. Is that $16,000? $16,000. That's crazy. I told myself I should never have sold that to you, Buck, for that, especially that price. I was like, God, I'm just giving it away. I know this book's got legs. Comic fam, but I'm this, is the, this is a big part of this discussion, though. We're in a market that we've never seen in history. And here's the thing. This particular sale could be an anomaly because the prior sale that happened I believe was within a day, if not same day, for a CGC 9.8. And it sold for, oh, it says after, and it sold for $8,000. Half of what the, I believe this was a Heritage auction sale, went for. So. Welcome to Heritage, guys. If you do an event auction with Heritage, look, I consigned books with Heritage. I did. Okay. I bought some stuff from Promise Collection, and I left them a box of books. They've been selling some of my books at the weekly auctions, and I'm getting butchered. 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 Murdered on these books. It's like, this is ridiculous. What is going on? Yeah. Exactly. And then I had books going at the event auction, and they were fantastic. I got the numbers I should have gotten, and they did great. You know, so, it, it has to do with the event. There's a lot of things that, that have to play a role for the perfect storm to take place. And we know, based off of Tomb, one, we've seen multiple of these come back because you've been grading them like crazy. I have a 9.8. I've owned two officially because, you know, you hooked me up with a 9.8. And this book has a lot of problems from the printer. You know, it, it has like off centering. The, the letters on the bottom get cut off. The it's, staple placement. It's like Marvel Special Marvel Edition 15. Staple placement was terrible on that book. Horrendous. Okay. And this one is better, but it's generally pretty bad. Plus, they have their own defects that are generally common for that book on the back of the cover you'll see an indentation like almost like a quarter size quite sure. a bit you'll see roller streaks smudges that come on the spine that are common which shouldn't take away from the grade 
But they, you know, they do take away from my appeal, and I end up pressing them out and cleaning them anyway. But you know, there there are things to know about certain books. Daredevil one sixty eight, same thing, a roller across the front. You'll see it all the time. Demon number one, very common for Demon number one to have this grainy feel along the front of Demon, where it's almost like you lost color because it was stacked on top of another book. It's not. That's normal for that book. I've seen that so many times for that particular book, and that's why in nine eight you see these prices skyrocket. Also. Why I would suspect a tomb one to go for near double what the top of the market's ever been the same week as another book in the same grade selling for half the amount. There's other things, you know, we don't know for sure. I've looked at both of these pictures and to be honest, they didn't seem like they were that different, but things happen. The auction setting is, is a completely different environment than what we are traditionally watching. So I am very excited that you hadn't seen that price though, because no, I, I, was, I was very shocked when I saw that sixteen thousand dollars sale. And I don't know if the page quality is different on one of them over another. White pages, both. White pages, both. Uh, people do go bonkers over eye appeal. Again, I don't know. I'm, stable places are different. I Rap was different. Book. I looked at the book. Man. See, there you go. You looked at both of them. They so. didn't seem different. I mean, but maybe I missed something. Maybe someone knows something I don't. But still, double the price, sixteen k, and then an eight thousand dollars sale. It's very strange. But for these types of reasons. That's why you got to go CGC for this particular book. Yeah. I mean, you're going I, I for agree. that. The, you got to go. You got to go for the high end. And, right? and no disrespect, you know, but we're just going by what is expected from certain books and certain, certain, certain tiers and dollar amount for those people who are buying them. Okay. We are speculating on the people buying these books. They want them as CGCs. Okay. Now, not saying everything. No. But for this conversation at this very moment with this particular book, it's going to go to CGC. Yeah, and I'm going to get into it a little bit here in a second as we get through more of these with more explanation be, be you know, to, to emphasize why I feel like this with certain particular books. Now, I would send this if it was a 9-4, maybe yep. to CBCS. Why not? Okay, because I don't feel that I'm missing anything or losing anything or the rarity level at a 9-4 wouldn't garner a CBCS grade. Right. So this for me at a 9-4, I would submit. So these next two books that I have that I'm submitting to CGC are... Um, not as high grade. However, I'm not looking to get these done quickly and I want them in a CGC because the competition is pretty fierce with these books in low grade because there's a lot of them. We're talking about Batman, uh, Detective Comics rather, Batman and Batgirl, issue number 411. Yes, that's right, 411. I almost forgot the number. Of course I know that number. This is actually, I traded you and got one of these from this. Is the first copy I ever got was from you back oh, in the day. Okay. Yeah. I traded you a one twenty nine. You, you traded me this, this comic book and it was a freaking gorgeous book, by the way, as well as a bunch of two fisted tales. Some of the first golden age books I ever got. So anyways, I had to get this book back. Um, I really like Talia first appearance of Talia al Ghul. And I also have this strange tales one sixty nine first appearance of brother voodoo. Both of these books, I don't expect to take off until way next year, Talia, whenever, right? It's kind of like sleeper DC keys have been low rise. You know, the we're seeing some crazy sales right now, but it, it's mostly been Marvel books. We've seen some DC books too, but I still think that there is money in DC books, especially the keys long-term. And Brother Voodoo, we're looking at Multiverse of Madness at best. So we have time. Considering the wait times for CGC and CBCS, if, I, if you're cool with waiting... And you want to try to bank on the biggest bang for your buck, considering how much you invested into the book, because I know the prices I paid. I want to go for the top tier that I can get as far as market potential. And considering that I have the time, why not send them to CGC regardless of their wait time? Yeah, I, I saw those books and you mentioned that to me earlier and I kind of disagreed with you on it because I feel like those could be CBCS books just as well. That they it could, could be. I don't think they garner any grade that's going to make a difference. But I get if you're not in a rush, like literally any rush of like needing in the next two, three months, send those away. That's no big deal. I mean, really, there there isn't a, a necessity to send a CBCS. If you want it back in a timely manner right now and the grade to you is apples to apples, then you might as well send to CBCS. I would send those to CBCS personally. Right. We disagree with this one, yeah. comic fam. We're not always agreeing even on the own show on our own show here. But for me, you know, these are some of the first ones I've graded as far as these keys go. And I think they'll be easier to move in a CGC particular you know, for these particular keys. You know, other keys are different, but you know, I could see myself sending these to CBCS just the same. 
And again, that's important, right? Because later, when we're discussing these books, man, you know what? Let's save that a little bit. Save it. Let's what table do you got? that portion. Hit me with that. some more CGC because I got to get into the CBCS stuff. Okay. So, Monster Frankenstein number one. Bronze Age goodness, man. Okay. Mike Plu cover. Uh, Bronze Age goodness, like you said. Dude, these books, that run, yeah. it sells for way less than it should. This, than this, it should even. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I see people selling... Um, Issue ones and other appearances, and I'm constantly surprised. I'm like, come on, this book needs more love. It's because people don't know. This is a stellar run, fantastic covers, and artwork by some of the legends. Yeah, I mean, this to me is a 9-8 copy. Yeah. Okay. And if it's a 9-6 copy, okay, great. And again, this is something I would send to CBCS if it was a 9-4 or a 9-6. I'd be comfortable with that. But for 9-8 potential, which I think it's got very strong potential, this is going to CGC. Dude, you brought some nice books, man. This is absolutely 9A potential. Comic fam, it is it is really something cool to see a 9A bronze or silver age book. It's so much different than a modern book. Modern books, you kind of see them all the time, right? You kind of question whether or not something's 9A or 9.6. But when you get down to like these types of years of books, Man, it is one. It is something to see, like zero spine ticks on a book this old. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Okay, hit him with that next one because this next one. I don't, what's up with you and Ghost Rider, man? Because you've got some high grade appearances and you keep getting them. Yeah, I just um, I have a friend of mine who's been um, who pretty much hoarded all these books in the nineties. You mm. know, this is when they were worth nothing. Okay, so every month, you know, or so, wait, I talk to him. He sends me some. I give him a good value for him, and. I just, you know, my experience with CGC hasn't been consistent, so I never know what's going to be the 9-8 or 9-6, 9-4. You know, like, you you should know. But right now, between 9-6, 9-8, I've been like, really? Like, I'm looking at this. this how is this not a 9-8? Okay, 9-4 to 9-8, yes, there's a big difference. You should be able to, that, that's not a problem. We've but, all been there, comic fam. I got to hear your comments in yeah. the comment section And below. I've had some wins. Don't get me wrong. I have Tim's 1-9-8s. I have a Marvel Spotlight 6 and 9-8. I have a... Uh, a Frankenstein one and nine. Eight. Okay. You're holding a Marvel Spotlight six and nine eight. The second appearance of Ghost Rider, which I think could be a nine eight. This raw, copy. raw, and I have two copies. One that's probably going to be a nine four, which I would probably send that to CBCS. Okay, but this at a potential nine eight, you know, will go to CGC because it's just something that I feel garners more of a CGC label and holder. Yeah, the top tier. Notice the gurus his preference is leaning more towards CGC when you get the pristine type of book, the, the big key book, the 9.8 potential. You got to consider this. We're going to get into it in a little bit in a second, but the market potential, the market pool is so much smaller for this type of grade. You're talking about being lucky if you get more than a handful of eligible buyers at certain rates of some of these books. We just talked about Tomb of Dracula one, although it's probably closer to a eight to $10,000 book, just selling on heritage for over 16 K. How many people are in the market right now to drop $16,000 on a book? You got to consider that because when you have that low amount of individuals who are even eligible and ready to pull the trigger on something, well, if you go a different route for that grading company, you may cost yourself some money because if you only have a handful of buyers, they are more likely going to wait and be there at the time that a CGC book is going to come to market versus the CBCS. But I'll, I'm going to come back here in a second here because I have some defense to, to uh, be had for CBCS as it pertains to value here. But before I get to that, I want to finish here with a um, two other books. X-Men 239, keep an eye out on this book. Mr. Sinister's first appearance has skyrocketed. His newsstand has skyrocketed. This is his first cover appearance. And with so many individuals getting comic books graded, covers matter. The display properties, you know, like being able to see it from afar, see it on a set, see it in your collect, in your long box when you're going through stuff. It matters being able to visually see the character on the cover. And we're seeing these books see an uptick like we've never seen before. I have a 9-8 potential here that I'm probably going to be disappointed with because whenever I think it's a 9-8, it's typically a 9-6. Whenever I think it's a 9-6, it's a 9-8. It's my curse. It's a gift. It's a curse, right? As Monk would say. But this particular book has 9-8 potential 
and one that you can find for the on the cheap. And that's why it's going to CGC. And lastly, I have a Golden Age book, my Margie 36. I've been buying this for so many years and it took so long for this book to start getting the love it deserves. I feel like I brought it to a lot of people's attention. They're scarce. The first time Stan Lee was written in a comic book narrative, a fictional narrative, he uh, takes Margie out on a date to go see Frank Sinatra, also known as Frank Sinatra, but they changed his name to probably not get sued. And... We have a gorgeous copy that I know is so competitive right now with so few on the census, so few people even bringing this to market. I'm comfortable waiting, so I'm going to send it to Sarasota, Florida to CGC. And it's a great cover. I mean, the big the big face right there, the wink, it's beautiful. Isn't, so, isn't it awesome? I, I love that book. So yeah. what do you got? Uh, then I Okay, so another book that I had and really just getting a little redundant is a Swamp Thing Comics number two, Bernie Wrights in cover. This one I would submit to CGC in a 9.8 and a 9.6 because it's a, it's still tough enough in those two grades where I feel that it, a 9.6 or 9 CGC would be better than um, CBCS. A 9.4, again, I can go CBCS on that. I don't sure. think I'd be losing much of anything, really, and it'd still be acceptable to understand, that, okay, 9.4. And so that's, that, that's another reason for this book specifically. You have the potential if you can... If you can wait and it has the potential for those big digits for you, CGC. Makes sense. All right. What's your last one? Um, so, uh, yeah, I wasn't necessarily going to. I mean. <sighs> Are you on the fence about this one? Comic fam. He brought this to the table. I'm going to call him out on it. He's holding a first appearance of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. This right here was a stellar movie that you rented out a theater for your family and the team to enjoy. Yeah, that was a good time. I mean, the amount it cost to rent a theater for 20 people. Surprisingly affordable. Was, I was like, damn, how much are you spending on this? And I looked it up myself because it's just on their website and it was cheap. Yeah, in theory to what it costs to get a ticket, it was very, very much exactly the same price. But you get this private event. You get to have something special with friends and family. Kids get to run around and be kids. And, uh, and the kids ran around. Yes. They were they were having a blast, a blasty blast. <laughs> yeah, so it was a little distracting. Don't get me wrong, a little, you know, couple uh, eye daggers thrown at a few of the kids or a few of the parents to for not uh, <laughs> taking control of their children. But regardless, I love the movie. Okay, I've had a lot of excitement about this book. I mean, I believed in this book for a while. And this one will probably go because it's probably a 9-6. All right, and I feel for this book, I would submit this book to CGC 9-4 and up, I think. Okay. I think in a 9-2 borderline CBCS. 9-0 for sure, I would submit to a CBCS for me. So I actually looked up these numbers this week, not knowing you were going to bring this special Marvel edition issue number 15 to the table. A difficult to secure in high grade because of the black cover. The first appearance of Shang-Chi. We have September 6th, the highest sale of this book in comic history, $18,000. It's big. But it was followed up three days later with a $13,800 sale. Granted, I appeal. There's other factors that play. We were just talking about this, but the market cap for this book has exceeded 15 k easily. This book could have been secured at the start of this very year, February, for $7,500, a low of $6,700 in April. Let that sink in. I feel it. You feel it? I feel the same. You thing. knew it, dude. I did know it. You've been talking about this book for such a long time. That's why I'm like wanting to point it out here because you were going ham on this book and it was well before trailers. It was well before. It was just, you know, hey, we're, we're finding out that it's coming, but that's pretty much all we knew. Yes. And thank God it was a good movie. Okay. So let's get into some CBCS stuff here because this is a little bit easier to go through here because um, first off, I have a book that's signed by James O'Barr. Okay, we have The Crow, issue number two. I'm still doing crow stuff. What's going on? But this one right here is signed by James O'Barr in 1993. It's a gorgeous book. It's not going to come back at a 9.8. But here's the thing. With CBCS, they go through a third-party authenticator to 90, I think it's 97, 98% accuracy. Those percentages matter, comic fam. I'm giving you a, a mind bomb there. Carnage style because I know what's out there on the internet. It just is what it is. There's a 90 plus percent accuracy to it, which is why CGC's witness program is so awesome 
But if you don't have a witness, this is your next best bet. And we have James Obar signing this cover. You got to go through CBCS. If you're, if you have something signed, if you have something signed by Kirby, if you got something signed by Stan Lee, you don't have a COA from the Todd father on the recent King spawn one. You're going through CBCS done deal. The other book that I have here are some variants with CBCS. Your wait time is going to be shorter. It is what it is. It's significantly shorter. We're going to get into the numbers here in a second. It is significantly cheaper across the board to go through CBCS. We're going to get into those numbers here in a second. I like to send modern books that I'm not worried about being blue chip books down the road. All right. If I have ultimate fallout for first miles, Morales 9.8 potential, I don't necessarily want to compete with CGC 9.8s because there's a plethora of them. Everyone's getting a copy. We've all had a copy. I've had a Dejevic 9.6. Like they're not tough to secure. They're expensive now, but they are common modern books. I like sending in variants that I think could get a nice boost in value if it gets the 9.6, 9.8 at an affordable rate quicker than the alternative so I can move it faster, get in the hands of a collector who's going to really like it, who wants it more than I do at the moment. And not have to worry about the competition because there are already not a whole lot of them graded as it is because they're variants and they move quick. So some of the variants I have here, I have the um, Star Wars, War of the Bounty Hunters, Sarah Pacelli variant. It's a virgin cover done by Scorpion Comics. Fantastic. Some of the best color work on any Star Wars comic I've ever seen. And this book goes for like 30 bucks right now, 40 bucks. So I'm not into it all that much because I bought it at release. And I think this would look great in a slab. Someone would want this in a slab and what is the price for a CBCS slab right now? $16 if you're not a member. $18 if you're not a member. 16 bucks if you are a member. There you go. So it's 18 bucks if you are not a member. 16 bucks if you are. A $4 difference per book um, versus the competition. Then I have Thor number six. This is the variant, the wraparound cover, because Donny Cates has reminded the community multiple times that this scene that took place in Thor, what Thor saw when he was kind of going in his like little trip that he had because of the Black Winter, courtesy of the Black Winter, he saw a future with Thane or Thanos wielding this gauntlet looking, you know, item on his hand. I don't, it's, it's black. It's different with uh, surrounding himself with Marvel zombies is what it looks like. I think that's cool. We know it's going to come back. This book is going to come back around, but he's working on Hulk right now. I mean, I don't really see this happen anytime soon. Then we have... Spirit of Vengeance, Kushala on the cover, virgin copy, fantastic book. And this comic book, I was able to secure on the cheaper side because I bought it at release. You see in a commonality here, the store variant marketplace can be kind of volatile. There's a lot of variants that come out. We make them ourselves. We know this better than, than most. This book, because of the character, because of how gorgeous this cover is, I thought was a great opportunity to get something graded at a cheaper rate. And I would like it faster than CGC's current wait times. I don't want to wait six months to get this book back or whatever the, the, the turnaround times are, which we're going to get into here in a moment. Last but not least, well, actually I have two of them here. I have another Scorpion Comics exclusive. This right here is Ice Cream Man, and it is a homage to The Mask. Awesome. I think it was like 660, yeah, 666 copies were distributed. This is the a lower print count, a virgin cover. I'm a big Jim Carrey fan. I'm a big fan of The Mask. This is a cool book, but again, not one that I'm thinking is going to see a huge uptick in the next six months. We knew Ice Cream Man was slated for that, like, I don't even remember the streaming service's name because it came and went. The one that was like 10 second shows. Do you even remember what that was? It doesn't even matter because... I think that Ice Cream Man is here to stay as a kind of legacy independent horror comic book. It's like becoming its own, it's it's growing its own fandom and long-term, it's going to be known as one of the best anthology horror series and comic books ever. I firmly believe that, which is why I'm like, you know, I believe in Ice Cream Man, Maxwell Prince. This cover is fantastic. It's, it's unique and it crosses fandoms. So let's get it graded at a discount. Also, Monstrous, I picked this up. It's 
I think I paid 30 bucks after every, all said and done. Um, it's the third printing of Monstrous. A lot of high hopes for this run. A lot of people really enjoy this run. It's a tough book to get in high grade. However, I don't see in the next six months much much happening with this title. You know, I'm, I'm watching Key Collector just like everybody else. I'm looking at option news. So because I'm willing to wait, notice a lot of these are modern books though. These aren't books that are like 9.8 potential Bronze Age keys. So a lot of the, var the variants are going to CBCS for me because it's cheaper, faster turnaround time. I'm going to be able to get them back in hand to distribute out to the community who wants them. I can totally understand why you have those books going to CBCS. It makes total sense, especially with the signature ones. I mean, signature books... You know, I have a few that I should probably submit as well. No brainers, right? Yeah, absolutely. So one of my first CBCS books is going to be Thor 372. And again, I'm new to Senate submitting to CBCS. I'm deciding now that I no longer need CGC to be my only source for submitting books. Sure. Okay, so forget that already. I'm going to do this um, first appearance of TVA. And I think it's like a 9.6 to 9.8. And Time I Variance Authority featured in Loki. We're not going to see much on Loki for probably over a year. So this is going to be a lull for this book. So why not? Yeah, why not? And I've decided that if a book is a $600, $800 book and in about a 9.8, that I'm just going to submit it to CBCS. Sure. Okay. Keep it simple for myself unless there's other outstanding things. So, But for the most part, that's the blanket statement I'm going to give it. Tales of Suspense, number 27. Silver Age book, uh, When the Oog Lives Again. All right. This is a, probably a 7.075 borderline, but I don't think it's going to make a difference if this is in a CBCS or CGC holder. Okay. It's a pre-hero Atlas book. All right. Excited to have it, but I think I'm going to submit that to again, CBCS, Dr. Strange 53. Okay. This reprints FF 19 story with Kang, you know, being in Egypt, but it's not Kang. And then at Redcon that it is Kang, blah, blah, blah. Ramatut. Ramatut. So this could be a nine, eight, but for me, I don't think it makes a difference on CBCS or CGC. For now, Deadpool 54, Punisher, Deadpool. All right. Again, I think this is fine book in 9.8, CBCS. I don't have a problem with it. I think the value is pretty much the same. And then we'll discuss turnaround times and value and why we are also taking that into consideration. That we got Punisher not coming anytime soon, very likely to the MCU. Deadpool, I know, will happen eventually, but still, it's a book that someone's going to buy because of the cover, they're going to buy because of the grade but they're not going to necessarily buy it for the investment right now. So why not get it done now? Why yeah. Not get it back faster. It makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Cause these aren't going to be keeper books for me. Right. You know, and we have monthly sales and I don't think it makes a difference. So Avengers seven. And if it does make a difference, it's enough for me where I'm not concerned about it. Right. Number seven. Okay. As a Illuminati. Yeah. First yeah. Illuminati. First Illuminati. I know it's a key book. But again, it falls into that bracket for myself. And then The Walking Dead, Kill Them All, number one. This was an E, I believe it was ECC exclusive. Emerald City Comic Con, that's right. I've had them since. You've had those since that con? Sitting raw. Do you remember when um, at Emerald City Comic Con up here in Seattle, the Walking Dead variant that you're holding in there, um, Kill Them All, The like Walking the Dead, not to be confused with Metallica, their first album. This book is foil. And do you remember what it was going for at that show? I do, and that's why I'm hoping I'll... <laughs> I remember trying to get as many as I could because this was fairly new. These Walking Dead variants they were giving out the cons were extremely hot, and it was fairly new concept that people were getting them when they entered the convention. Mm -hmm. And then I was, I was literally having people give them to me. I was like, oh, if you don't want that convention, it might be violent for your children. Why don't you all take it? And I've, I've had these since, man. This is the, I think it's the Governor variant or something yeah. like that. But it's an extremely cool book. Okay, and I was like, do I need to see you see these? And I, was, I thought about it. And after sitting here in, our, in your living room and talking about it, I was like, you know what? No, these are going to CBCS. Okay? Why not? Why not? Absolutely. Comic fam, why not? So um, some of the things just to go over it here that we've chatted about is, you know, when you're looking for the higher end books to be graded, you're likely going to CGC because the buying pool is smaller on those books. So you want to stay competitive. You want to be able to move them. We're not even talking about prices at, at this moment. We're talking about just being able to move the book at a higher rate. You know, then we're getting into the speed. For me, setting in variants, modern books, if unless it's like potential blue chip kind of thing, I think that the added value you get from a grade is enough through CBCS 
to stay competitive. You know, will it sell for more? Well, we're going to get into prices here on how much it costs to get something graded. And then you got to consider the other costs like the graders notes. Yeah, they're different. One's way more expensive than the other. Um, we also have to talk about the actual, like, you know, like what are CBCS grades going for in comparison to CGC? Is it that much of a detriment to make you go one way or the other? Because it's in my opinion, based off of what I've seen, and everyone can go and find examples of one sale comparing it to another sale. So, you know, I've seen it all. Comic fam, you, you tag me a lot on Instagram and I appreciate it. Follow me at Comic Time 101 and the Golden Age Guru at the Golden Age Guru. We do sales over on the Golden Age Guru's IG, by the way, every month. We do a badass claim sale. So you want to be there. 